Welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome. I've got no chill, y'all. I've got no chill. How is everybody doing? I know I can't even know, but like we're so excited for this episode. As you can see from the title, we have a community member on that is very loved and adored by so many of us. Rosie O'Donnell, that's going to tell her community story today. And yep. we're just going to hang with Rosie and let Rosie be herself and tell us her yep. story. Uh, but if this is the first time that you're listening to our podcast, let me tell you a little bit about it. One, I'm Kim Carlos. Um, I'm both Jernine and I and Kat, all three of us live in Atlanta. Um, we yep. are friends on TikTok and we are all taking a GLP-1 for different reasons um, to help with our health. And it has bonded us together. And we have a very strong community on TikTok. And with everything that was going on with the media, spreading very false um, you know, information or misinformation or incomplete information, we just got tired of them taking our testimonials and turning it into just whatever it was to fit their agenda, you know, and it just wasn't right. And we wanted to take our voices back because this medication for so many of us has changed our lives. Mm -hmm. So we want to do that. And we're trying to get very loud and try to remove the stigma around obesity, to remove the stigma around these medications and hopefully get loud enough to the point where we can affect change. And we're not 100% sure what that looks like, but we know if we get noisy, it's possible. So luckily, um, we are, we have been able to do this and we have so many of you that are supporting the podcast and it's growing every week. Um, but that's what we're trying to do here. So I, uh, take Wagovi. I've lost 62 pounds and it has completely changed my life. I have dealt with, um, really just crippling anxiety. Um, I would say the majority of my life. Um, but just sort of like, and I always try to describe it as I had, and I'm sorry for those who are, are not new and already know this, but I had a sort of like I lived in my mind, just constant obsessive worry mm -hmm. about everything. And when I got to a certain level of this medication, it turned off like a switch. And it has been the most powerful, amazing, amazing thing that has happened in my life, aside from having my son. Mm -hmm. And I have just gotten to a new place of health and happiness. And I just want everybody to feel like this. So we're hoping that by getting loud, we can somehow find a way to there to be more access to this medication and more affordable access to this medication, get these drugs on more formularies and find a way to make it, you know, required in some way because obesity is a chronic disease that leads to so many other things, especially type two. So we are trying to change things and I'm very passionate about it. So I'm sorry for running off, but if you're new here, which you may be, I wanted you to know. So my other co-host is Kat Carter. If we Hi. talk a lot about butt stuff, because Kat does butt stuff, so you don't get my butt. butt. Stuff. She's very into fitness and exercise and exercising the booty and making sure it stays good. So mm -hmm. we do talk about Kat. And Kat is in France and doing butt I stuff am in France. France. Yes. And I am in the, yes. I am in the French Riviera. I'm actually in Nice. I'm on vacation. Um, and I... Lots and lots of walking, and I just posted something. Uh, if you check me out on TikTok, Cat Carter Seven, um, I've I've always, like I said, like like Kim said, I've always loved fitness. I loved working out, but I was always uh, I struggled with binge eating disorder. Just yeah, so that's always been an issue for me. And there's so many other layers to this, but to make yeah. it short, uh, short for our um, fantastic guest, so we can honor her time. Um, so. Binge eating disorder. I love fitness. Um, I discovered Manjaro. Um, I actually found a, uh, we touch on this in all of our podcasts. I found a doctor that actually listened to me and was not a butthole and dismissed me and told me to eat less and move more because, well, jerk faced, I move a lot. I move a lot. Yeah. So, a lot. But <clears throat> yeah. So, Manjaro's helped me lose uh, 60 pounds, give or take, maybe. I don't know what's been going on this week. It's been a lot of rose. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of cheese. Um, so, um, but uh, it really, it actually, it has really helped. I, I, I just know, yeah. like, at, like evenings when you come home and I get back to the hotel room, I don't want to have a, a piece of cake or whatever. So I'm not yeah. obsessing. I'm not obsessing over it anymore. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I do extra uh, squats and and butt stuff. <laughs> Because I, I really think it's, you know, the media, of course, talking about getting Manjaro butt and no Zempic butt. Yeah. It's just because you're losing weight so fast. But we don't do that because we already have muscle under there and it's saying, hi, uh, muscle. 
Yeah. So just work on that, you know, yes. that butt stuff. That's and right. The front Riviera. <laughs> well, thank you so much, yeah. Kat and Janine, for our new listeners. Tell us a little bit about your spiel and what you're doing here and, you know. Well, <laughs> well my name is Janine and I'm sticking to it. And I and I have Maljaro, but um, yes, even though there's muscle under there, Impression. I do butt stuff yep. with cat and I'm sitting on a pillow right now. Yeah. Squeeze but, your cheeks. Squeeze them. <laughs> uh, well, um, that might require too much work right now because I gotta focus. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I am uh I'm on Mount Jaro. I had been on TikTok but never posted anything and just uh I was just led to share my journey. Uh I'm a type two diabetic. I'm also I have Sjogren's uh syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease. But on top of that, I'm just a female that uh struggled with obesity later in life on top of perimenopause. Good times. So yeah, good times. So that is why I'm here and uh for uh healthcare access for all. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. We all want that for mm -hmm. sure. Well, that's great. Um, so um, as I mentioned earlier, our very special guest from our community is Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, I'm going to invite her in and let give her the space that we give everyone in our community to tell her story from beginning, middle, end, whatever she wants to. And we're not cutting anything. So here we go. Without further ado. Hey, Rosie. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Welcome. our little scrappy podcast. Hello. <laughs> Hello. There was something called Manjaro butt. Oh, yeah. It's all in the news. <laughs> yeah, it's all in the news. Yes, I heard, but I haven't heard of Manjaro yeah. butt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, you did, like, well, it's yeah. Like a yeah. Yeah. butt with, with skin hanging off. Is that the. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. It's like saggy butt. Yeah. It's just, it. a butt. It's just yeah. a butt. It's just a deflated butt because I used to have a butt, but I don't have it anymore. I really about think butt we need again. a pillow in the merch store that says something about MJ butt. Like, I feel like that would be really funny with the logo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. Hold on, Kim. Let me go on my vacation. I'll, I'll get off. <laughs> You know, that people like us who've struggled with weight our whole lives yeah. are now yeah. so concerned that somebody might notice that our butt is, you know, when you're getting Smart. close to whatever the number is for you and that you said, I will never go over. And you mm -hmm. are, you yes. know, at that point, at that point, it's just about your health. So I don't yes. care if I get Manjaro face. I don't care if I get Manjaro butt. I know this, that. When I went to the doctor, I moved out here two years ago. I had to get new doctors. And um, this one doctor said, you are pre-diabetic. I said, I know, but they've been telling me that for 10 years. <laughs> and she said, yeah, but 7.0 is the cutoff and you're 6.9 or something like that. She said, I would rather treat it now then wait and see what happens. And I already was a type two, you know, right on the borderline yes. diabetic. So in about September of last year, she gave me what she said, would you take a shot? I'm like, I, you know, I haven't taken shots, but I'm sure I could. So she gave me that and, and something else called Repatha, which I don't think has anything to do with mm. weight loss. Mm. I have to take that once. That's something with my heart, I think. But I have to take that once every other week. And I take Manjaro every uh, Thursday. So I didn't okay. start until December. Oh, okay. Kind of like nobody was talking about it then in September. I Like I had seen the oh, 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 Ozempic. But yes. I, I didn't really know what it was for or think anything about it. And yeah. So on December 16th, I take the shot and I go with my son and he gets engaged and I knew it was happening and it was very emotional. And I never, yeah. uh, I just was so emotional. I was very uh, crying during, we, we saw a musical after him and his fiance. Oh. And it was Phantom and it was great. And uh, Congratulations. a lot, crying a lot. And then I went to Nobu, which is my favorite sushi restaurant in the world. Mm. And normally I, I can eat there. I couldn't eat anything. And I thought it was because I was upset, right? I didn't mm -hmm. think, when she told me, this doctor who's wonderful, 
when she told me we're going to do this to get your A1C down, I said, okay, she never mentioned weight loss. And I wasn't in the world of it yet. So after about 10 days where I noticed I wasn't eating so much, but you know, I wasn't sure. I get on the scale and I lost like nine pounds. So I go right away to, I have a terminal illness. Yeah. I told my doctor, I'm like, there must be something wrong. I'm not hungry. (laughs) And I lost weight and I don't know what's happening. And she's like, that's the Manjaro. I said, it makes you lose weight. She said, yes. And I was totally unaware, you know? Yeah. So I had the vertical gastric sleeve at 50 after I had a heart attack. So probably at my heaviest was when I had my heart attack. I, I don't know. I think I was 240. I don't remember exactly the number because like at some point, like I remember two two seven. Remember that show two two seven? Yes, yes. two two seven. Absolutely. I always told myself, oh my god, I'm two two seven. And before that, I was Karen Valentine, room two twenty two. So that was sort of my like, I'm staying in this. I can't go past this. Yeah. And when I did, I stopped weighing myself. Well, I had a heart attack, and uh, I was lucky to li- survive it. It was the LAD, the Widowmaker. And that was about 10 years ago. I lost about 30 pounds on it. I got down to sort of where I am now, like in the 190s. Mm -hmm. And um, then I gained some back, like 10 pounds back. But it definitely was a help for me. And I it was the only option at the time. So uh, I did it at all of my doctor's requests. And um, now cut to 10 years later, and they tell me I'm a type 2 diabetic. And I get this shot. The first month or two, I was in shock. I could not believe the effect that it had on my thought process about food. You know, we, we, all of my family, Irish people, you know, potato pulling Irish farmers from the 1700s, that's us. You know, we all have the same kind of body and the same kind of weight issues, but it wasn't, you know, when we were young, it wasn't that way. When my mother was alive, my brother Danny was in husky clothes, which was like a big shame for him, he tells me now. But the rest of us weren't. But after my mother died, we all gained weight because nobody was there to say, don't eat the Oreos. Nobody was there to, you know, to be home with us. And we were five motherless kids. And we ate what 10-year-olds would eat, right? Left to their own devices. So um, I think in my life and career, I've always had a weight issue, especially in Hollywood. When, when I did League of Their Own, I was like 170 pounds. And I remember Penny Marshall going, I want you to lose 10, 15, or 20 pounds. Can you do it? And I said, well, if I could do it, Penn, I would do it because nobody likes to be obese. Nobody likes yeah. people to say to them, you should lose 20 pounds. Nobody, you, know, you don't carry it around for fun. You carry it around for reasons uh, that yes. you don't even fully understand. Right. And I yeah, thought I they were mostly emotional re- reasons. Yeah. But from this medication, I've realized there's a biological component that is hard to um we, we just we just lost the south of france we, we, <laughs> we did she'll be right back i bet we'll, we'll somebody's making her like a brie omelet or something there she she, yes oh she's back and better than ever oh there you are. i was worried about you in the south of it's, france over there right exactly it it's was a hard knock team. life for you it's a hard knock <laughs> life uh so anyway i uh you know, I always thought that the weight was emotional and, and, you know, when there was stressful times in my life, you know, like when I started my show, I was probably about 180. That was in 96. And by the time the six months were up from when we started in the summer until Mm -hmm. uh, Christmas, I had gone up to 200. And I remember Mm -hmm. thinking Roseanne Barr announced on the tonight show when she was under 200 finally. And I remember in my mind thinking, okay, you're as big as Roseanne Barr. Not that that's a horrible thing to be, but I was always (laughs) smaller than her. And now I was equal to her. 
And we were both entertainers, both named Rosie, both in show business, both comedians. Yes. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was uh, easy to be mistaken for her and, and to uh, sort of categorize myself with plus size women for the first time, because I always bordered Gap and Lane Bryant. Yeah. I was like, not Agreed, fit yeah. enough for the Gap, but I could fit in the XL. And mm -hmm. I was not fat enough for Lane Bryant. In fact, I used to make a joke that sometimes in the mall, I'd go into Lane Bryant and they'd mm -hmm. say, we have nothing here that could fit you. And I go, oh, thank you. I'll go <laughs> thank you so much. You know, like, exactly. <laughs> like, 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 oh, look at me. I'm okay. But it's a silly thing to think that, uh, you know, the, the plus size wardrobe community or lack thereof uh, was only really one place that we could go. It's different yeah. now. Yeah. It's it, totally, it has evolved quite a bit. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Quite but I, um, I have been on it since December 16th and I've lost almost 30 pounds, like 29 pounds, but I am on uh 2.5 because oh my of gosh. my gastric sleeve. Yeah. So oh, okay. Me, she said, your stomach is much smaller than people who've not had this surgery. So right. the amount of stuff that you need, the stuff that's in there, uh, mm -hmm is less than most people. And if you yeah. have no side effects and you are not suffering, I'm not suffering at all. I yeah. think that this right. is a miracle drug. Yes. It's a miracle drug. I tell people the truth of my children learned very early to hide their candy at Halloween. Yeah, and same. from November 1st until Christmas, every night before I went to sleep, all I thought was, there's a Butterfinger in here somewhere. And all I got to do is find it, right? I, I couldn't stop myself. Like you hear people talking about yeah. the first time they smoked meth or the first time they took heroin, they thought, I am never not going to do this. Well, that's how I feel about Manjaro. Not yeah. only does it really regulate your A1C, I, I went from a 7 down to a 5.1 or a 5.2. I, now I, I know I'm privileged and, and white and rich and I have a lot of things that most people in the world don't have access to and, and I have the financial ability to pay, although because I'm diabetic, my insurance does cover it. Um, but I called my agent after about four months on this and I said, could you call Eli Lilly and tell them that I would be willing to be their spokesperson for free? if they would still provide the coupons. I don't even want to be paid. I just want to be able to go out there and say, this will change your life. It's changed mine. Now I haven't lost, like some people go on there and, and whether they admit it or not, including some celebrities where you look at them and go, I don't know who you think you're fooling, but nobody goes from looking how you did to looking how you are without this medication or this help. Yeah. No one Tell it, Rosie. You know, people used to say about Oprah, they used to say, she's so rich. Why does she just hire somebody to punch the food out of her hands? You know, like that oh. she was so, why could, could Oprah Winfrey have a weight problem when she's the richest, most successful woman in the yeah. world? Because that's not what it's about. It's about your genes. It's, it's about your biology. It's about right. nurturing and, and ways that you compensate with food, you know, ways that you emotionally satiate yourself with food. I have a chef because I, I took a year to get healthy and I hired a chef and she's amazing. And she makes me calorie appropriate and protein appropriate meals. And sometimes I, I still love the meal. This is what people say to me. So you're not interested in food. I go, I'm not interested in snacks. I used okay. to yeah. have snacks a lot. Very good point. If there were cookies at my house, warm cookies, I would eat them. In fact, when Kelly and I, my ex-wife, when we started dating, the first time she came to my house, I had made Nestle's Toll House cookies and they were still warm. And she never had a weight problem at all. And so she came in and I said, would you like a cookie? And she said, no, I'm not hungry. And I said, 
You don't have to be hungry to have a cookie, you know. Cookies are not about hungry. (laughs) I better watch this one. She's got some sneaky ideas, you know. I believe that somebody wouldn't want a cookie. And I think back to times in my life, like when I first did The Tonight Show, everybody else backstage was worrying about what they were going to say, what the interview was going to be like. And I was trying not to eat the brownie in the craft service table. I was sitting there not worrying about my first national television experience. I was worrying that I really wanted to eat the brownie and I couldn't. And it was the only thing I thought about before I went out on that stage. Food noise, as people are calling it, had really run my life. And I didn't even know it until I took Manjaro. I didn't know So I would love to be able to try to get Eli Lilly to make compassionate use for this drug. They're going now, apparently, they're going to do it for obesity as well, which they really should. And I also think it could help anyone with addiction. Because any kind of... Because, Mm -hmm. you know, I find that I don't really want to drink either. And I'm not thinking like I used to because I was on every diet Mm -hmm. there was. I even did Fen Fen back in the 80s or 90s. I, you know, we did chub club at work. Exactly, I did the chub club and gained weight. You know, like, but I never (laughs) never answer for me. And any fix that I got, I knew it was temporary. Well, all I think about this drug is I want to be on it the rest of my life. And I don't care if it's still 2.5. I don't care if I only lose a pound a week. I don't gain on this. And yes. gaining was a big problem. So yes. some people have said, well, you only lost 28 pounds since December. That's only, you know, I go, right. And, and in a year, it's 60. Yeah. In a year, it's 60 pounds. It's and I'm halfway crazy. through the year. Now, some people say you should go up to 5.0. But I'm listening to my doctor. I feel very good. I have not had one side effect be- besides the first week when I couldn't eat. I felt like yeah. I thought I was going to get sick, but I, I wasn't necessarily nauseous, but I just felt like, what's going on, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, aside from that, I've had zero side effects. And I know that I'm very lucky. I know there are people who've tried it and they can't bear the side effects. But for my body and for what... It does to me chemically inside of my cells is miraculous. miraculous. Is miraculous. Now I don't know about you ladies, but I always have to watch when I lose weight because I don't like the attention it brings to my body. And yeah. that's from abuse stuff as a kid. That's from not wanting to be a victim not wanting yeah. people to desire me in a way that I feel I can't control. Yeah. So as much as I um, am very thankful to have it, I'm very happy that I'm staying on the low dose because if I continue to lose a pound or two pounds a month, I'm okay with that. I really am. Yeah. I, I think the slowness allows my emotional world to catch up to my physical world. Like I, I went to a wedding this weekend and, the woman who brought me, it was a black tie wedding. Don't ever do that to your friends. It's a horrible (laughs) thing. But um, I got a tuxedo, you know, and, and um, the woman was like, Oh no, these are too big. These are too big. And I'm saying, well, since I saw you last, I only lost two pounds. And the woman seamstress who was there measured me. And she said, you lost three inches on your waist. I was like, really? Since then? She's like, yes. So I don't do like, you know, I don't do the string or the, the, the measuring tape to see how much I'm losing. I just know that I am. And I know by the fact that I'm not eating the cookies that are sitting right there. Yeah. And they're sitting there now. And sometimes my chef will make a cook, one cookie for me after dinner, uh-huh. right? Like this big and like, and I won't, I won't eat it. She put it in the little tray next to me. And I say, thank you. Then she leaves and I go, I, I don't really want it. Right. Cause she's made me a very balanced protein, rich vegetable meal. Mm-hmm. And I feel satiated. I feel full. And I no longer look to add something to my mouth 
when I have feelings or I no longer am distracted at the movie theater. I went to the movies with my daughter and um, she wanted Twizzlers and Kit Kats, right? <laughs> and um, she's like, and the popcorn is horrible at this theater. I said, okay, so let's get Twizzlers and Kit Kats. And we get there and it ended and the Twizzlers weren't even opened, right? She's a little, she's a 10 year old. So she was happy with her little mini thin Kit Kats. And I just yeah. sat there with the Twizzlers and I was like, look at this. There was a time when if I went to the movie theater, not only would I get a Coke Slurpee, I would get popcorn with milk duds in it. And I wouldn't yeah. be able yeah. to not do it. Yeah. It was almost like I was drawn like a magnet to the concession. Yes. Yes. And, and then fighting myself to not get the milk duds, but then giving in and getting the milk duds. And I felt so ashamed, you know, I felt yeah. ashamed that, People were making fun of me, uh, you know, weight wise, everything. Whenever anyone disagrees with me, especially politically, the first thing they say in their insulting of me is you are a fat, blah, 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 blah. You know, communist, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> but the fact all these fat as if I didn't know. Yeah. Yes, I know what I weigh, sir. Oh, I yes, have to class. Right. I and, and the way that people are discriminated against, thought to be, as you said earlier, fat and lazy, thought to yeah. be non-disciplined, thought yeah. to be uh, gluttonous. And, um, you know, people were always surprised. My best friend, Jackie, is very thin and a runner and always never had a weight problem. And she always said, Roseanne, you eat so much less than me. How yeah. is it possible that you are this big? I don't know. I didn't know how it was possible. Because if you would compare what I would eat to what someone else would eat, you'd think I would be the one who was thin. Yeah. But it was not the case, you know? And most yeah. of my weight is in my stomach, which also I think has abuse, uh, abuse connotations and connections that some parts of your body you want to be covered up a little bit more, not exposed. Mm -hmm. You know, I've worked on that with my therapist for many, many years. And and I just find it interesting that, you know, most of my weight is, is right there, you know, in yeah. my belt. And, um, and I just think that if there's any way that I could help at all, you know, I would do anything to make sure that people can get it. It seems so unfair. And, and even more unfair, in my opinion, are the people who have been using all three of these weight loss uh, medications and then because of the cost or a decision by the company making them, they have to stop. Yeah. And I, like you ladies, I assume, live in fear of the stopping. Now, I'll yes. tell you that last week or two weeks ago, we couldn't get Manjaro. It was right. sold out in every place in L.A. So I had a 13-day, uh, from, from the last shot to the next shot, 13 days. And I was happy to say I didn't feel much different, but I also yeah. think I've been in my body for six months and yes. maybe there's, you know, there's uh, ex uh, excess, but I didn't feel the panic that I thought I was going to feel, but yeah. the women and I hear their stories on TikTok and I see the pain in their face saying that I will do anything to get it. And that's kind of what I feel, not because yes. I want to look a, a size six, you know, not because I want to, but I want to live. I want to be healthy. I want to not have to worry about carrying this extra weight. And when people say that's all you lost is 30 pounds, I want to go get 30 pounds and hand it and to them, them and right. say, yes. walk up the stairs and walk back. Now tell yeah. me how you feel. It affects yeah. every part of your life, not just the emotional shame and shade that you get from the world, but the physical wear and tear of the excess weight on your body and your heart. And I had a massive heart attack. And you know what? It wasn't enough to make me lose and keep it off. Yeah. A massive heart attack. So yeah. I don't know yeah. what else you can do besides this medication. Yes. And yeah. you know, people say, what if it comes out that it's going to affect you this way or that way? I'm like, I can tell you this, I don't want to live my life without it. My life was yes. out of control without it. And I know there are people who take, I think it's called an abuse 
ant abuse where, where you take a shot and then if you drink, you get sick, right? Uh, I know there yeah. are people who have medications that sort of stop their addiction. And yeah. I really do believe there'll be other uses for this drug in that arena too, because I do believe mm -hmm. I was addicted to food. I do believe I was addicted to sugar and I could not, I couldn't shake it. 90 something percent of people who go on diets gain it back. Yeah. 95%. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding oh, me? Yeah. Right. And so Jenny mm -hmm. Craig just closed, right? Yep. They, they're out of business. And, you know, Weight Watchers, listen, I know it works for some people, but it doesn't work consistently and it doesn't work long term. Mm -hmm. No. And Weight Watchers so now cool. has just an online prescription company that yeah. can get yeah. you your your uh, your medication. So I think this is the way weight loss is moving in terms of health and medically. And I'm really happy and proud that I got to experience for myself just how life altering it is. And I would love to help in, in any way. I, I would be more than happy to be the spokesperson. I had some people on talking about this and they're like, well, how come you admit it? I'm like, don't you notice I admit everything? <laughs> you know? yeah. Right. Like, have you One. Me? <laughs> I it. It. Yeah. If I feel embarrassed or if I, feel, I tell people right away, but uh, I didn't, I don't see any reason because to share what works and what might help someone else, that's the greatest gift of your life, right? I have found this thing that is so beautifully changed my, my noisy monkey chattering brain around food. And I want every woman who's lived like I have for 61 years to have the opportunity to try this and see if it works with their body. And then to be able to stay on it and not have to take out a mortgage. A thousand dollars a month is obscene. It's obscene in America, the way that pharmaceuticals work. You know, and Eli Lilly, I believe it was diabetes, insulin. They just came out with a cap on it. So yes. Eli Lilly, although they have done a lot of um, a lot of non-ethical things like um, uh, Oxycontin. Yeah. They also have a soul as far as a company goes that they did decrease the cost of of the insulin. And now I'm hoping that they will decrease the cost of this. I mean, they're a multi-billion dollar company. And this is really serving a community that has been largely ignored and ridiculed yes. for decades. Ridiculed, yes. yeah. It's still easy. I, I, I think the reason why a lot of times like there's, there's resistance to it is because the narrative is too easy. They, people have to stop using it as a butt of a joke like you're saying fat this yes. fat that like they it, you got you're changing the narrative and so people are not comfortable with that so um I that's where you know I, a lot, I, some of that resistance comes in once i presented at the oscars and um i was thin i was doing a broadway show i was like in the 170s and mm -hmm. i remember my brother timmy calling me up and going why'd they have to put you with the plus size they said all the bigger girls and then they show like you and Delta Burke and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Tim, I don't know why, but even at my thinnest, I'm still called fat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, and I don't have any desire to fit into a patriarchal view of what a woman's body should look like. I have no desire. I have no such influences in my life and world. And uh, I'm lucky because that's a freedom that, that a lot of women don't have, you know? Yes. Yeah. But that's my weight story, and and um, I'll answer any questions. I I don't know what else you would want to know, but um, yeah, um, yeah. I think what we had hoped was to let you speak and then just have dialogue and have a conversation. Okay. Great. Um, so a lot of the things oh, that you yeah. said, I think, too, around like how this changes the biological dysfunction. I don't think that people understand that, and like even on your TikToks, I still see people say tell them that they shouldn't use it to lose weight because they're still thinking tr traditionally of like fin fin, right? And they're still thinking of it like a diet pill. They're still thinking, oh, it's just gluttonous people that want to lose weight. And it's not like we know scientifically that it's writing a biological dysfunction. So we you know, like- it is an illness. It it's is. an illness. And yeah. it causes so many medical problems that the yeah. companies are going to be saving money 
innately yes. by, you know, having like, you know, everyone always says, you know why they'll never cure cancer? Because it's so expensive to treat cancer. Yeah. That yeah. nobody in the companies and all of these, you know, research stuff. Uh, my glasses are crooked. My kid Thanks. hit me last night. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> that people, you know, where's the motivation? Well, the motivation in this in this case has to be humanity, humane treatment for a vast majority of the population of American citizens. We have like the highest obesity rate of, of any country. It's absurd. And it to not think that this is um, a medical condition or a, a malfunction in your, your system, your body system of how to metabolize and store fat um, is wrong if that's what it is. And yeah. everyone who, sometimes on my TikToks, people will say, I'm so mad because I have diabetes. And I'm like, listen, I have diabetes and I couldn't get mine last week either. But do you yeah. deny the people who are feeling the same life altering effects that we are? Do you deny that to someone because they don't yet have diabetes? You want to wait until they're 61 and they have diabetes and then give them this miracle cure? I don't think that's fair or humane. I don't either. Yeah, I think I think it does make a lot of sense too. And it's like even with me, so I I have had I've always been obese. I was a big chunky kid. That's always what they said. Like you know, it was always you have such a beautiful face and a big personality, and you're so proportionate, just all that kind of crap. Like all the way growing yeah. up, and yeah. I had a yeah, and I had an eating disorder from the age of eight. So I had been cheating, like, I would say very consistently through the majority of my life. And I couldn't stop. Like the way you described that was like exactly how I felt. I had no control. And it was like, and then it was almost like I had to satisfy that thing. And it would only last a few minutes. And then all of a sudden it would happen to me again. And I had lap band surgery in 2007. So a really long time ago. And it worked for me for quite a while. But guess what? I had a couple of miscarriages. I had my son and I gained it all back. And then some, because like you, you said, have it removed, the lap band removed. I have not had it removed, but right. I haven't had any issues with it. Oh. Insurance and the cost of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You Cause know? I always, I always feel worried about people who have things yeah. inside of their body that aren't Me supposed too. to be there, you know, mm -hmm. but oh, um, yeah. you try everything. That's the bottom yeah. line is you try what's available and what's available yeah. at the time was, the lap band and then finally came the gastric bypass and the sleeve yeah. and and you know people are trying to catch up people who yeah. have obesity are trying to look for something that's going to help them and you know what in my 61 yeah. year this is the first thing that has yeah and it yeah. does not feel intrusive it does not feel like i am punishing myself Sometimes yeah. when I was on, you know, a Weight Watchers or, or Diet Center, one of those, it would be like I was white knuckling it. You know that expression yeah. in AA, yeah. like when you're not mm -hmm. working the program, but you're just holding on by the edge. And, you know, I felt like every diet I've been on, that's what I was doing, holding on yeah. and white knuckling it. But I do not feel that on this. Yeah. It's like you're like you have a freedom to make your own choices. It's like well, it's that's just what I said to my doctor, I said, you yeah. know what this provided me with? She said, what? I said, freedom. I am free from food. Mm -hmm. I ordered, I ordered um, Chicago deep dish frozen pizza sent to your house, Lou Malnati's, right? I ordered yeah. it. It was in the freezer. Oh, okay. We recently moved from this house to go to mm -hmm. a different house. And the people who were helping us move threw it away. And yeah. you know what? I hadn't eaten it in two months. I had ordered it impulsively online and it was here my favorite kind of food and I didn't eat it and I knew it was here and, yeah. and contrast that to knowing where the Halloween candy bag is. Yeah. All I can do is think of where did they hide their Halloween candy? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. No, food is, definitely, definitely. Food, is, yeah. food is an when addiction. My angry at me and saying yeah. bad things about me in the press. That's what she said. <laughs> she used to steal our Halloween candy. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. You have that, honey. Every obese mom. Oh, well, I still, I steal okay. candy too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because I, I, I went to Overeaters Anonymous because I just, you know, it's, and that's what you say. It is an addiction because it's part of those 12 step programs, you know, NARC, NARCON, um, AA and OA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was like white knuckling, praying, calling your sponsor is just, 
uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. not a slam, not a slam on it, but yeah. I went to one OA meeting. I was pretty young. I was like 20. I had gone to college and gained weight in college. And so I was going to an OA <laughs> meeting, but I never had a binge eating issue or I never had a throw up eating issue. So I was very lucky. Right. Yes, but, right. um, but I went to OA and I heard a woman say, I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts and I got two dozen donuts and I ate one dozen on the way home, but I threw the other dozen out the window and everyone started to clap and congratulate her. And I thought, I cannot relate to this at all. Yeah. I had no ability to find myself in that meeting because it seemed like everybody was addicted the way people are to meth or heroin. Yes. True. It can't be yeah, yes. very much much so it can be very severe yes it can yeah i think um in terms of you know the binge eating and seeing and this is something that i've i've sort of realized and I, i'm kind of thinking like with you were you were describing i didn't want to eat and you were feeling very emotional with your son like for me i remember like the moment that i had no emotional connection to food it was like it severed like a cord like just between my body and my and i didn't know what to do with myself because I had always soothed with food, like always, you know, and I didn't know. You mean, you mean on, that. you mean on Manjaro, you feel that? Yeah. This. Well, I take, I take what Gobi, but yes. Oh yes. Same, same. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yes. what it does. It, it does yeah. set your, your noisy, confused yes. telephone line from the, you know, party line from when we were young. Yes. That's what it sounds party like. Party line. There's marshmallows. Yeah. Are downstairs. I like that. And it, it yes. keeps coming in every direction. And to get mm -hmm. peace from it is so unbelievable that that mm -hmm. I really I really wish everybody could try it to see what we're talking about. But everyone yeah. can't because it's no. financially prohibitive and it is out of, uh, you know, out of off label for Manjaro. Still, you have to have diabetes and they're really kind of cracking down at that. But they did yeah. so well with those coupons and why they decided to discontinue the coupons. I have no idea, but I would even do it for the coupons. I yeah. would say, I'll be your spokesperson. I'll do your TV commercials and um, I'll even get weighed in. All yeah. I want to do is tell people the truth of this drug. That's awesome. God, I yeah. wish that would happen. I, I, this week, and that was when I made the TikTok, just hoping. We'll to put the word out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that we, um, in our community, people are at a place because they have experienced this level of health, right? The mental, the physical, all of it, and the control of their life again, right? And the happiness that they can have again. And they are desperate, Rosie, to like, to keep this medication in their life. And they are taking very scary risk. Like, Listen, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I would do anything different if I was them. I wouldn't either. I have had a taste of it for six months yes. and I am unwilling to go back to life before it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And there are, and there are so many, like there are ways that they have like um, certain compounds that, you know, probably half the cost and, and those are what like have FDA oversight and they have certain certifications that you would want them to have, mm -hmm. but people still can't, the average person still can't usually afford $500 a month. So right. they're, they're doing is they're getting like Groupons and um, they're getting, you know, c companies on like on you know Facebook and social media that are selling it for a couple hundred dollars a month. They're telling them to mix it up in their kitchen. They're, um, Oh, it's, getting, dangerous. it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Period. It's, it's dangerous, so and there's dangerous. no need, and it's corporate greed. And I don't understand why they don't see the goodwill that would be brought on to them and their company by helping millions of people who need it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. we've been trying to, when we have the doctors on here, we've been trying to say, listen, we know you're not going to save this compound to save this compound to save, but can you just let us know what the right. red flags are? 
So they make well, yeah. a, a safer ish decision decision because we are so tight in our community and, and we, we understand each other so well, right? We understand the pain and we understand like the joy once you take this medicine, you know, right. and what it can do for your life. And so it's just like breaking our hearts, you know? And so we just, we want people to understand, but we also get it. Like we all get it. We can't go back, you know? No. And it's just, it's, it's so unfair. Though, so unfair to ask anyone to do that. It's so unfair to the people who have used it and now cannot. I mean, I almost yeah. feel worse for them than I feel for the people who've never tried it because yeah. to live without it once you have the freedom of it is yeah. is a, a fate worse than death because you know what's going to happen <laughs> is you're going to get you know. and then some and, and the noise. no way to stop it. No. Yeah. I, well, I was also curious because, you know, you talk about your kids and, you know, and I know you talked about like weight issues as you were growing up. You know, I I have my son doesn't seem to have the problem yet. He's very tall and lean, has seemed to have good metabolism like his father did growing up, although his, his dad's now obese, too, my husband. And um, and but it's hard to have conversations with him around food because I don't want to put my shit on him. You know what I mean? Um, but he also is autistic. So he's a lot of texture and like sound stuff. Right. So I, I want to come at him with the most. Huh? How old? How old? He's 10. No, my he's daughter's 10. autistic, too. And she's 10. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, she's 10. Oh, wow. too? Yeah. Oh, and she only eats four things. Yeah. And there's nothing I can do because of the texture, because of the, the smell, texture. because of yeah. how it feels in her hand. If it's warm at all, yes. Cold, I have to, we have to cook her food, which is usually organic chicken nuggets, tater tots, mm -hmm. um, and try to get her to eat a fruit or a vegetable, which rarely yeah. happens. Yeah. We put it at the table and then, um, then the chef will cook my meal and 30, 40 right. minutes later, she'll eat the cold food. She won't oh, eat wow. it. If Warm. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's okay. so, yeah mm -hmm. my son is very weird about like the way things look and feel and taste and all the same thing. And it's just because their brains just work differently than ours. You know what I mean? And I like, I was just they're not doing it to be, you know, no. obstinate. They're doing it because no. this is what their brain is telling them. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. are only a few safe foods for her. And, yes. you know, it's the, the weirdest thing is this my chef Elizabeth. Yeah. She um, makes her fried cheese. So she <laughs> grades up the cheese and she yeah. makes like a crepe, a thin crepe of like hard cheese. And yeah. she's thin like a uh -huh. pancake, thinner than a crepe. And she eats wow. that. And Hey, that's protein. That's Love number it. five. That's the fifth food she's eaten. Yeah. Oh, Although we were at a good. birthday party. We were at a birthday party a few months ago. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, usually I bring my own food for her because yeah. she won't eat anything. And I see the mother hand the hand her a ketchup filled hot dog. And yeah. she didn't she looked around and I pretended I didn't see. And she yeah. ate the hot dog. And I like no. to cry because of, and then I say to her in the car, so how'd you like that hot dog? She yeah. said it was good. Well, I go buy every fucking hot dog brand that there is. Oh, yeah. People don't understand. This is huge. Yes. We even had a little a thing where you put the hot dogs in the toaster. So I thought she would yes. like that. Yeah. Well, never hasn't eaten it again. It was just a random party oh, thing. And, you know, but I did see her do it. And I yeah. did, did give me hope, you know, for yeah. the world. My other children don't have weight issues. My oldest son, only since he got injured in the Marines, He's gained mm -hmm. weight because he had a back uh, fractured back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's trying to to lose it now. But he was like your son, a lanky, skinny, blonde towhead. And yeah. Then when he's like. 28, you know, he, he's gained some weight and he's working on that. But, you know, none of my kids really have it. And uh, it's interesting because you don't really know their genetics. I don't yeah. know if their moms were obese or their dads. Or, right. I don't really know. And uh, yeah. So I don't, you know, nurture nature, biology yeah. or, you know, your birth home. I, I don't know uh, yeah. what, what it is, but I, I'm very happy that they don't have it because yeah, of course. I know the pain of people making fun of you because of it. Mm -hmm. You know, even the president of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not good. It's like, yeah, whoa. And, I, whoa. And the fact that everybody was doing that, like Letterman would have him on and, 
people would have him on and he would just go off on me being yeah. fat and gross and a pig. And, and it was allowed. Like yeah. I remember thinking, well, the National Organization of Women is going to introduce a statement or a press release and say, no, didn't happen. It was like misogyny 101. You're allowed to brutalize someone uh, about their appearance and have it be laughed at on all the major media talk shows. Yeah. It was shocking yeah. to me. Yeah, it's horrible. And and what kills me is that also sets a precedent, right? That president, president. But it also it's sets okay it, for oh, it, yeah. if it, then it must be. Okay, okay. And, and you man, that's just yeah. how people are, especially if it's like a leader, regardless of the leader, you know, and it's like, that's kind of how things go. And then we can't stop this shit if they don't shut the hell up about this kind of stuff, you know, like, and I, I'm hoping that the narrative of the fact that we can change it, right, that it's way more about the fact that this is a disease, the fact that there are FDA treatments. And it does hurt me to my core to think that there are people out there who can't benefit from this. So many people can't, Rosie. And like, I, I was, I'm trying and it's very difficult, but I'm trying to find a way to have companies look at this as a DE and I, like the, the fact that there should be coverage for diversity, equity, and inclusion, like that should be part of a benefits package, you know, to include treatment for your disease, you know, but a lot of people that have been reaching out to it, they're like, they're just not there yet, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. But you know, yeah. who knows what will get to the company. Maybe there's a woman whose husband works at Eli Lilly and she's watching this and she yeah. could say, you know, uh, Rosie O'Donnell said that she'd be willing to do it for nothing. Indeed. You know? oh, yeah. Yes. And yeah. I, I am willing because I know the benefits and I, I can honestly say, even with the threat of, well, what happens in 10 years if you grow an extra head? Yeah. It's not going to happen. Right? It's been I may not be here in 10 years. Well, That's yeah, the thing. Well, yeah, I'll be here, here in five. Yeah. So, well, I, you know, so. I'm 61 and I, and I think to myself, if I'm lucky, I got 25 more good summers. Yeah. That's it. And we all yeah. have an expiration date and we want to yeah. be able to live fully and, and freely yeah. uh, until yeah. we're done. And this exactly. drug you know, yes. it made yeah. our lives longer. Yeah. For the first time you know in yeah, like 15 years, I flew when I flew to France, I was not scared that I was going to spill over into somebody else's seat. I wasn't yeah. scared that mm -hmm. someone was going to snicker and talk about me. I wasn't scared yeah. that someone was going to go like this when I walked by, like for the first time in so many years. So that's yeah, awesome. I'll take it. If I grow that's an extra that's that's fine. Yeah. I might go to the South of France just to have that experience on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> just go ahead. Come yeah. on. No, you get That's the Porsche. You get the Porsche thing. up to your plane, ma'am. <laughs> you get the Porsche, though. Delta. So, I mean, you know. Write a letter to Delta. Say, thank you for Porsche care. It's the best. <laughs> well, listen, I have my shrink in six minutes, and uh, okay. I missed it the last two times because I was away. So yeah, I don't no, want to no, be late no. for her. Um, yeah. Thank you for writing me. You know, um, I, yeah. I saw your, your plea you. and I remember thinking, of course I would do it. Why wouldn't I do thank it? Why would I, I appreciate do this so much. This is really going to help. Really you know, the community you. really, well, really does. When it's going to be on and then I can, yeah. um, or is it on now? Is this it? Oh, no, it's on now. We're no, recording. It's recording. Okay. So yeah. I, I will, if you send me like a little clip or something that has your thing, your Chiron of how to get there. I'll put it up yeah. on mine. And I have a lot of people on that. That would be wonderful. Rosie. Awesome. That would be awesome. So much. And we're Thank so you happy so much. Thank you all very, very, very much. And carry on with your good health. And uh, let's try to help people if we can. Let's awesome. do it. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. We all will. Right. All right. Thank, Thank you, Rosie. All right. Thank you, Rosie. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Love her so much. <laughs> She's the best. Let's bring on Dr. Rosen. Hey, Dr. Rosen, are you available? Yeah, Dr. Rosen, you're like sneaking on. on. He was. He snuck on. Oh, he said he was just listening. He did. Okay. Well, it so just was listen, Dr. Dr. Rosen. It's okay. He was creeping. It's okay. We can't see. Just it. listen. Well, he was like, I'm going to anyway. join. I'm going to between lunch to see if I can. So um, Rosie is going to have Dr. Rosen on her show. Um, so this would be really great if you. Um, oh, there. Hey, there. there. Dr. Rosen. Hey, Dr. Dr. What Rosen. a great show. What an Wasn't amazing it show. I had oh, I I know. so entertained. It was good, right? Great show, guys. She's the best. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So much yeah. interesting stuff that came out there. Yeah. 
Yes. yes. She came on a live of someone in our community and said all the things. And there were so many people on there, but I was like, she just said all what she just said here. Like, and I was just like, she gets it. Like, and it yeah. was just, she, it was so cool to hear like a positive celebrity say, Hey, this is important for everyone. And here's why. And like that it's so kind of her. Cause I'm just like this little person. Like I'm, I have a little bitty following in TikTok. Like, you know, it's a ripple. She's yeah. got a ripple. Thank you. Oh, we lost oh, you. Doctor. Darn it. It's okay. You know, we'll actually be like popping back. back. I can hear you. I can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, she has no there ego he is. About it. You know, she has no ego about it. No. And she no. just, it's amazing to say, but like, she's just one of us in this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She really is. I can she see totally that. Gets it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, and I thought it was so interesting, Dr. Rosen, about when she was talking about the sleeve and only needing 2.5. Remember when you were telling us that like, yeah. That, because she has more yeah. already because of the intestines of the stomach, right? Also, she's not being driven by weight loss, you know? So, it is a, yes, yes, it's true. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Because Janine's like you. that too, right? So Janine is gonna, you know, she'll be at the thank lower you. for maintenance. Look, right. she, yeah. thank you. Oh, <laughs> won't cut it if you're, if you're chasing weight loss and, and for a lot of people that's appropriate, the low dose won't cut it if you've had a big amount of, of weight loss from the sleeve and then you're trying to get the rest, you know, yes. you'll just be yeah. tired. But she's primarily driven by her A1C control, which is yeah. doing amazing. And yeah. she's getting residual weight loss benefit. And yes. since it's not the primary motivator, her doctor's being conservative and she's, she's also extremely um, sensitive to it. Yeah. If you hear the way she yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, very. Couldn't eat on the two point five, right? Yeah, that's a marker of someone who's really sensitive to GLP one. Yeah. Whereas I, who will say like, I didn't really feel it. Yep. Yep. It's well, interesting when you hear that. Like I'm, you know, I I feel like I felt it, but I didn't. I don't know if I really was losing weight because I I was so like broken by diet culture that I was like, I'm just gonna eat less. You know, right. and then I was like, eventually I was like, mm, I think maybe I'll think about what I'm eating now. And then right. I, I never was like week to week tracking because I come yeah. from like Weight Watchers and points and calories and all of those different things. And that shit broke me. So I just can't do that anymore, you know. But it's so many people that in yeah. the community, especially the newbies that like are trying to see like what is the quote unquote expectation. And yeah. I love the fact that she said that she would be a, a spokesperson, you know, um, yes. I couldn't really say it then because it just wasn't so the kind. time, but, yeah. and I mean, you know, plus I was trying to say it, but I, yeah. but, but I love the fact that because Novo Nordisk has one of my sorority sisters as a spokesperson and she's now on a new sitcom and they now also have Anthony Davis yeah, for the GLP ones and yeah. Eli Lilly doesn't have anyone and yeah. you have a person like Rosie O'Donnell who's saying yes. I will do it for free it's like perfect person yeah because she's yeah, yeah. But the thing about Rosie is she gives an altruistic you know, bent to that coupon, which I think is really sweet of her. I think it may be, um, you know, she's trying to to give the benefit of the doubt to Eli Lilly. I'm a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, she's trying. More. Um, she did. Uh, well, we, we do see all yeah, the other stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. She I was think that's trying. I think they're trying to capture market share from Nova Nordis, um, yeah. you know, mm. from Ozempic, and when you get people hooked, then they're customers for life is the idea. Yes. So you, you give them, uh, you know, a very low entry rate and then all of a sudden you take it away and you put yeah. a higher price point that they have no choice but to pay. Yeah. Um, but talking about the people who lose the medication is extremely, extremely, you know, um, heart disheartening. Um, yeah. that's an interesting angle to talk about. Yeah. Also, I think what's so cool is I'm hearing a lot of stuff like you're hijacking your body with yeah. these medications. You know, the people who are afraid of 
<laughs> what's the beauty? You yeah. Know? Look at Cat and I. We're like, what? You're like, oh. right. Well, you guys understand. It's like you're taking your yeah. body yeah. back. Yes. You're like, yes. wait a minute. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 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 It's the opposite. You, you know who's hijacking your body? Food scientists who work for processed food companies, they're hijacking your body. Yeah. yeah that's Ooh. like what yeah. thousands of centuries yeah. of, uh, what is it, of scarcity that still works in our brains, right? Yeah. So yeah. They're exploiting yeah. all of our biology for their bottom line and leaving us holding the bag of obesity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah. this medication gives us the pause yeah. to, you know, say no to that stuff, yeah. even though they wired our brains, not just with how they construct the food, but the marketing and advertising around it as well. Yeah, you know, for sure. Birth so. Yeah, and I think like, even like birth with things, cookies, like you think of warm cookies, you think of like home and like nurturing and like they tie, you tie all these like emotions into these things, you know? And yeah. which makes sense why she always had cookies around, you know, like, <laughs> You know, and I, I think that's that's sort of like built in to our, I don't want to say our DNA because it ain't, but it, it's messing with our DNA because we're eating it all, you know? And I just, I I really think that it's, it's, it drives me crazy right now seeing so many people being put in this situation. And I just was very much, like she was saying, got to this point where I thought, are we doing anything with this podcast, like, sure, it's growing, but are we loud enough? Are we having people understand that there are safer compounds? You can choose those, you know, and like, are we? And then yeah. finally, I was yeah. on a live and people were like, you know, you're making a difference. It seems small, but you're making a difference. And then I was like, I want Rosie. And then she immediately was like, of course, you know, and mm -hmm. it was just like the coolest yeah, thing. And I, I'm hoping this is the episode that can help us get louder, right? That I can do more marketing and that I can, you know, we can have sponsors and all of these different things to like actually make a difference here, you know? So I'm, I'm really hoping, but you know, I'm, I'm an optimist. <laughs> Keep it up. Doing great job. You guys are, you are Thank all you. doing a great job speaking for the community. I really yeah. like what you said about compounds. Um, yeah. You know, I think that they are a mixed bag and there's some really great opportunities for people to access medication who can't otherwise get it. And then the notion right. of people mixing their own scares the shit out of me. They've like, got, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. and they're yeah. teaching each other how to do it, Dr. Rosen. Me, like I have a vial of powder. It's like, yeah. ah, especially if it's from a med spa or some like yes. international online website. It could have yes. fentanyl. Mm -hmm. so yes. Gotta Anything. have a doctor. Such a small it. amount of fentanyl. Can just you gotta have someone who can walk you through reconstitution, who can like monitor dosing. If you yeah. don't have someone who you can reach on a day's notice to yeah. like walk you through the administration of your medication, I would be very like- heavy. Yes. There are people that are actually buying these things from individuals. Like it's a fucking MLM. It's, 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 sorry. Oh, yeah. I didn't get that word. Like it's-, it's like people yeah, selling like those ah, steroids. Yeah. Then. yeah. Yes. Kim went like straight gangster boo gangster. the other day because I've been missing all of this. I, <laughs> I try to keep up. Yeah, she went straight like <laughs> like oh, do that full shit. Do frontal, that shit. <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa!" And I literally yeah. braced myself, Cat and Doctor Rosen, because I said, "Oh, well, wait a minute. Okay, now." I would expect that from me, but yeah. I sent it to her because there are two people in particular yeah. that are teaching people how to mix peptides at their Just house. Random people. Just like random. Randos. And they're in the community and they don't have any people gloves breaking on. Breaking bad type stuff. Like what's going on? Oh, oh my God. some junkies scary. type stuff. It's like but getting a junkie problem, vibe. Though, it is really that, is. Like we said, like they are driven to this by this bullshit we've been talking about. You give people help. You give people hope. You give people happiness and control. And then you go. Here we go again with this Nino <laughs> Brown shit. Oh my gosh. It's right. You give them hope. You give them, get them hooked. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. The narrative. Prepare for the narrative, because that's the next thing. 
Now yeah. obese people are just right. drug addicts. But instead mm -hmm. of it's one person to really get hurt badly, and yeah, you know, yes. so ahead of it, we got to get ahead of it because yeah, we do. It's a disease. This is a viable option and a treatment. Improves yeah. health. Improves mental clarity. You know, all those things. But yeah. you girls, you girls are carrying the flag. I salute you. I support you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your support. Yes, but thank I, you so much. So carry on. I'm here if you need me. Great job awesome. today. Thank you, Dr. Thank you so Rosen. much. I appreciate it. I'll be in Talk touch. to you guys soon. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Oh, this was such a good episode. <laughs> I'm gonna, if you have a, oops, oops, see, the phone slid. So guys, you guys don't want to see the, you know, the, the, the yes. my husband's underwear all screwed over. No, no, <laughs> mm -mm. Oh, God. I'm just kidding. It's not. To. I'm, I'm, I'm being we know, silly. We don't know if he does butt stuff, but we don't want to. So. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> the butt stuff joke is a thing forever. I don't know how to get around it at this point. Like, all no, I it's, 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 oh, Jesus. Butt stuff in France. <laughs> Let's have a Homer and Odyssey or something, right? Yep, I'm ready. Ready for some rose now. So yeah. So yeah, yeah. oh gosh. Yeah, this is great. Episode. Yes. I I really hope that people will hear her, you know, too. And and it was so good to have Dr. Rosan to validate the the science of it, you know, even though I don't think Rosie necessarily needs that. But wasn't it so interesting <laughs> what you said about Oprah? Because you know how I am with the Oprah. I will love Oprah forever, always. I yeah. don't care what she does. Like, I, I can't. She's a core memory. Like, legitimately, I remember her saying, I think it was Sydney Port today and, and a raisin, raisin in the Sun. And she mm -hmm. said on the minute of her episode, she said, if he could do that, what can I do? And legitimately, anytime I'm in a situation, even though I ain't over, I ain't ever going to be, I think to myself, if she could do that, what could I do? You know, and what could right. we do? So, you know, we have to, you know, I think keep moving forward. But I even remember her making that comparison with Rosie, um, with um, Roseanne Barr and then Rosie, right? And she's saying like, oh, I was thinking like, we're kind of the same and we're similar. And that's how I was like rating myself. I remember an episode with Oprah. I love Oprah forever. Um, I remember an episode with Oprah where she said that she remembered they announced the weight of Mike Tyson. And he was the heavy, heavy, heavyweight champion of the world. Of the world. And she was like, yeah. no, I, I'm the same weight as Mike Tyson. And she remembered those like moments, you know, but that goes back to us. Keep looking at bodies like they're one size fits all. And they're they not. are not. Yes. You're, yeah. Like, and it's yeah. not just how they physically appear. It's legit, not like with a T-shirt. Right. That's a one size fits all, which is bullshit of its own. But you know, the fact that our body it just doesn't work the same. And that's why my GLP one works different than your GLP one, because my body has a different type of de deficit. Right. It's totally different. You know, and I just I think it's a deeper conversation too because deep because you have different beauty standards for mm -hmm. for different sex of women so like yeah. there's for and, and and unfortunately a lot of it may be racial so like yeah. for african-american women we like tend to carry a little bit more weight because yeah. of our physiology yeah and, and then but people who who like are you, you mm -hmm. know maybe you know, have, have yeah. obesity, yeah. Mm -hmm. it like could be the, I mean, well, it, it is, it could be, it, it is the physiology. And so yes. that goes back to how long did it take to finally get Vogue to have, you know, a mm -hmm. plus size woman. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I'm and reading this book right now. I don't know if you guys can see it. Fearing the black yeah, body. Black body. Fearing the black body. Yep. Yeah, the racial origins of fat phobia. So, wow, it's a very good book. You know, Pat, I don't know if you saw, but Janine posted something I think from GMA, right? Or wasn't it Good Morning America, where they yeah. were talking about how they have altered like what they're suggesting for BMI now because yeah, I saw that out, like race, right? And and I, mean, I, I, think I I'm still that. suspicious, but yeah, I do. Yeah, That's yeah, it, no, that. yeah. Y'all know I'm an internal optimist. I, I, it's a start. You know? It's a like, start. It's a start. Yeah. yeah. And BMI is racist as hell. Yeah. <laughs> BMI is just oh! stupid. It's old racist and it's as hell. And, it's and we're such a mixture of everything. So there's, 
it's just it's racist as hell. It's yeah. It's so bad. It's so yeah. bad. And I hate it because I I had one of, I had someone comment on our on our podcast and say that she was a, she said she was a doctor. I don't know what kind or anything like that. But she was like, BMI actually isn't bad because your doctor should be looking at all the things. And I was like, but you know what? They don't. Insurance because companies do that too, though. They don't. Right. Do that. That's the problem. She was like, well, they should have inspected you and like wait around your waist. And I'm like, they no, don't because when they, they look at your obese. When they've decided that you're they in don't. a particular category, they don't do that. Or at least they didn't. Maybe they're mm -hmm. starting now. God, I hope so. But no, when I was. It didn't matter that I didn't have high blood pressure. It didn't matter that I didn't have high cholesterol. None of that when I was younger, right? None of that mattered. What mattered is. Oh, can we get life insurance? Can I have someone me, take your weight? The life insurance. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, it's right. But they see that scale. Yeah. 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 And it, mm -hmm. I, I for sure had people, even though I was perfectly healthy, all right, up until recently, really, you know, in terms of health, right? Like the normal things that you track, right? And, but then I go up and I get to this BMI and there's certain insurance, like a life insurance I can't even qualify for, even though I'm healthy, because they know ultimately, based on stupid BS, <laughs> like that, that I'll towards the path of type two and all of those things. Well, you know, and, and, uh, and BMI was not even created by a doctor. And, yeah, that and then also now, you know, unfortunately, well, you know, in, insurance is a whole nother ball of wax. But with type twos, even if you're properly treated for it, yeah, obesity, if you're well, and that right there is is the struggle properly. That right there right. is the fight that if you're properly treated, you mean because I'm a type two, I have to pay more and you could to deny me coverage. Yeah. Type twos get denied like crazy. And then on yeah. top of that, obesity, they're both chronic diseases. Yes. And it's not right because everyone doesn't have the same physiology yes. physiological makeup. Yes. It just no isn't right. Is that's all. Yeah. And that's it's why right. applying diet and exercise and saying that should work for every human body. And that, and if it doesn't, then you're fat and lazy. It makes no fucking sense. And like, here's my just, thing. And here's with, with 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 exercise. Period. Why do I have to work out to be thin? What if I just want to work out because I want to be happy? I don't want to yeah. chew my husband out. Like I just want to, or I I want to, you know, not feel like I want to melt into a puddle on the ground oh, no. and cry. Like oh, it's no. very important yeah. to your mental health. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's just like Rebecca right. said. I hate to, I hate to cut this short, ladies, but I'm getting texts from the fellas. <laughs> Is it because you're in France? Oh, I guess. Yes. I'm in France, and they are downstairs at the bar. They're like, "Listen, you, you." <laughs> they're getting ready. Enjoy it's cocktail enjoy. hour. Enjoy and, you deserve to oh my god! Uh, all right, it was so good to see you, ladies. Thank you, we everybody. You. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Doctor Rosie. Uh, I know. It was so okay. exciting. I'm going to leave you guys. Bye. Oh, Bye. I'll, my sign off. Well, yeah, with Catherine Hepburn. Always be yourself. Never quit. And and yeah. don't put too much flour on your brownies, ladies. Don't do it. And go don't have some it. wine and cheese. That's <laughs> what I'm going to do right now. That's a catism. Yes. Yep. <laughs> what? A catism. Wine and cheese? Uh -huh, it's a catism. Yeah. We're going to have more catisms. Mm hmm yeah. Oh, bye, 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 enjoy your vacation. Thanks okay. for coming. Bye, love. Okay, guys. All right. Hi. Uh, Journey. <laughs> I said when we started that we wanted Rosie and we got Rosie. I Remember? can't believe like it was the first thing you said. You were like, we're gonna manifest it. We're gonna manifest it. We're I gonna sure did, Rosie. didn't I? Yeah, I did. did right at the beginning. I did. Oh, my gosh it's a dream come true for me so it's, and like to have her i know it is for you too like to have her on here and have her speak you know for our community in the way that she does and her heart and how kind she is like i just i'm I, so I, thrilled i, I, mean, I am I, so proud that we didn't like completely geek out y'all i tried you saw the beginning i was like welcome <laughs> i didn't i didn't I, so I, I mean you know what i did my best to stay yeah. as level as possible, yes. but I but I almost lost it when she said that she would be the spokesperson for free. Oh, I cried. Did you see me? I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I was like, "Stop it, Cam." That's that's <laughs> yes. when I almost lost it because I was like, "Oh I my gosh, I what?" Know.
like what I mean, like what she could command. Yeah. Yeah. And, and hopefully it will help us do this and people will start paying attention because a positive celebrity voice around these medications is essential, you know? Yeah. And I think it's so cool that she's like in our community and like gets on lives with us and like does podcasts with us. I know. It's phenomenal. So uh, we she's decided so that even if she's gone, that we were going to do our favorite Rosie moments. And yeah. I was saying my, I have so many, of course we love a league of their own. Like, and I'm just, she mentioned that specifically. I just love that movie so much, but I, I loved her show so much when she was in like in 96. So I think I was mm -hmm. in like middle school, high school ish. Yeah. Cause I graduated in 98. Um, and I loved it and I would always watch it and I would record it uh, on, on a VHS. Like that's how I, I did that with Ro Oprah and with Rosie. Yeah. And, yeah. um, I loved her show and I always loved how she would like shoot things off of her desk, you know, <laughs> and then she would call people cutie patootie. And to this day, I still call people cutie patootie because it's the best, you know, and her show was just so funny and fun loving. And it just like lifted her my heart, you know, her, her show broke so many barriers I love it. because, yeah. because she was a female with mm -hmm. a like nighttime talk show set up, yeah. but it was during the day. But it was during the day. Yeah. It was yeah. so cool. Yeah. And it it's so like fun. now we look at that. Oh, and that's the norm. Well, it yeah. wasn't that way. That way just then. like almost 30 Oprah. years ago. Yeah. I mean, it was like Oprah was the like, the, and then I think they probably had some of like Sally Jesse and yeah. you know, things like that, but it wasn't the same. Like that was very like, it wasn't the same. It no. was like you said, it was like a tonight show during the day. It was just, it's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I miss that show so much. I wish you do it again, but yeah. I loved her talk show. Yeah. But I really love that she's such a proponent for the arts for Broadway. Yes, that's right. That we didn't even get to talk to her about Broadway and how much we love Broadway. We didn't even get to talk to her about Broadway. But no. I love how like she would take children, her foundation would take yeah. children to Broadway shows. Yes. Kids that lived right in New York, you know, so and they cool. may not even go to a show. Yeah. I, to this day, it's just like, okay. Like when I went to go see uh, a Broadway show in the back of my mind, I was thinking Rosie O'Donnell is a proponent of Broadway yeah. and I'm going to it. see a Broadway show. I mean, you know, you, yes. you, you never know how someone will impact you. No. And you never know like when that person's going to like end up in your life, if ever. And like, and I think it's interesting, like all these things, like it, it is, it does connect us, right? Not the medication, but like obesity yeah. and the biological dysfunction that many of us, you know, whether it's PCOS or insulin resistance or type two or genetic obesity, like, you know, or, or genetic type two, like you and I have talked about, like, yeah. you know, it does connect us in a way that I've never seen a community cover. Right? So I have decided and we're going to manifest this that uh -oh. this community can change things and that this podcast is going to move shit forward. And we are going because community is strong. Community is powerful. Look what we were able just to accomplish in two months. In two months. Telling stories and doctors caring enough to be like, yes, this is why this is true. Like, what could we do in six months? What could we do in a year? We're, maybe we'll be something I like I'm just manifesting. Maybe we'll be, you know, going and talking to fucking, I don't know, legislatures and shit of being like, this is why this matters, you know? And you never know like where the plus sides could go, but there's plenty of. Oh, the sky the sky is is the limit. Limit. we're going to do it. I've just decided, I know I'm an internal, internal optimist, but I am just decided it's going to happen. But no, you know, I remember the Broadway thing. Like, it's funny you said that, like I was convinced that I was going to be a Broadway star. Like I did chorus, I had solos. I was convinced until I was. I didn't 16. go that far. <laughs> and when I was sixteen, I was plus size, and I did not see representation of plus size women in Broadway yeah. then, unless they played a particular, you know, plus size role, right? right? And that just didn't really exist then. And I legitimately, just because of that, gave up on a dream, you know. Mm. Uh, and and that's all it took. And I I just don't want any more kids feeling that way. I don't want any more. I just I just this shit needs to stop. Like enough is enough, mm -hmm. you know. And, and we're gonna change things. I've decided. And Manifest. well, well, you know what. Kim, I am so glad that you've caught up because 
I think that it's already been decided that we're yes. changing things. I think that we just had to catch up with it. Yeah. And, and I and I love that she came on and she didn't come on as, oh, I'm a celebrity. She's yeah. she was so relatable. She's so relatable. I know. She's the best. I you know, she's yes. she's, you know, beyond relatable. And yeah. it's just like, OK, yeah, this is, this is what it is. And, and for all of you naysayers out there who are saying that this medication, like, just think about it. Rosie is a type two diabetic and yeah. Rosie wants this medication for anyone that it helps, mm -hmm. you know? So before yeah. you start judging people, consider that she's even saying like, Hey, you know, type two diabetes is not the only thing this helps people. And it helps it because it's a dysfunction within your mm -hmm. biology, you know? So before you get like that, like if you need someone that could legitimately like certain people we've seen on talk shows that run their mouth and think the medicine belongs to them could easily <laughs> have said those things, but she doesn't. She wants no. to put things, even when she went without for a week or two, right? Even yeah. then she still was like, I want this. She treatment. couldn't find it. She yes. She couldn't find it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. She couldn't find it. And, and you know what? And unfortunately that's, more common than not because yes i know you all remember when i couldn't find yeah my, the, the dosage that i'm still on 7.5 yeah. milligrams because yeah. and what one sunday i literally called 12 pharmacies i'm like yeah okay no mm -hmm. yeah no? Okay, yes. we call pharmacy roulette in the community <laughs> like, that's it because you look you, you are spinning the wheel and it's like okay yeah. mm-hmm Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess we do classic sign offs. <laughs> this, so. this is so this much fun to have us. Episode. We don't this have just the two of us. Hers, but she did hers. So it's just us. So my just classic us. sign off is as always, which is you are not alone. Yes. Clearly. Rosie even has this, and mm -hmm. it is not mm -hmm. your fault. Point blank, period. Oh. And we love you. Come join us on TikTok. Yes. And um, aren't you missing one? Oh, hasta la pasta. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. I think we're missing one of your classic sign-offs here. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, you know mine. It is a marathon and not a sprint. Exactly. That's it. It's a marathon and not a sprint. Exactly. We got to keep going. Yes. So we will be back next week. We have lots of really, really good things planned. So we hope you'll keep tuning in, keep sharing, keep letting people know that they're not alone. It's not their fault. Have them come to TikTok, have them come to the plus sides. Also, we have a merch store. So obviously yeah. like our podcast is totally volunteer, you know, so if you can do anything to help us keep the lights on with getting something really cool in the store, that would be amazing. There's lots of really cute things. You saw Jordan and I on last mm -hmm. that we were wearing our little plus size shirts and it was cute. And then um, if you can go there and I really like this whole idea of an MJ butt pillow with butt stuff on it. I feel like people would buy that. You know, that? and it'd be funny. Like a, we get a pillow and it says MJ butt on the back. It says do butt stuff with cat. I feel like that would be cute. <laughs> you need it. I know. I know. Anyway. So yeah, if you want to do that, go to the plus sides. Don't forget this game.com. Yes. And then go to shop and you can go and look at all of the different merches and it's made to order. It'll come straight to you. If there's any issues, we get reprints. No problem. So wow. please do everything you can to support us. We'd really appreciate it. We would. All right. Oh, and reviews and all the things. Like if you're like listening, reviews, you know, and that's like a big thing because that will make us get louder and louder and get referred up to other yeah. people who aren't necessarily watching this yet. So those things we really need community. So if you can help us out, that would be awesome. And until okay. then, uh, still a pasta. It's a marathon, <laughs> not a spread. We'll see you next time. See you Bye. next time, everyone. <laughs>